Hello, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City's proposed fiscal year 2014-15 budget has been submitted. It's now available for the public's review at the City's Open Data Catalog. You can reach that at data.kcmo.org. The City is taking a proactive approach to engage more residents in the City's budget process this year. We are offering three different ways to participate. An interactive budget chat, an online virtual town hall, and traditional in-person public budget hearings. This past week, Mayor James, City Manager Troy Schulte, Department Directors and Budget and Communications staff hosted the first ever Twitter budget chat. Using Twitter and email, city leaders discussed the budget with residents. City leaders responsible for making budget decisions personally responded to those questions and also took note of the comments coming in. It's one of those things that we strive for when we do KC Stat is to get people together to look at how um, things cross departmental lines and why it's important for everybody to have a sense of what everybody else is doing uh, because it breeds collaboration and efficiencies that way. And this is just another example of something that I, I commend the manager for doing and that's getting his department heads together to uh, talk about the same subject and see how each of them is impacted by that. Residents have another chance for online involvement. The city's virtual town hall website, kcmomentum.org, is up and running with an interactive budget discussion right now. KC Momentum is a convenient way to hear from residents who have good ideas, but who may not have the time or ability to attend a traditional in-person public budget hearing. Finally, the city's finance and audit committee will host three public budget hearings to get input and testimony. Those hearings take place Saturday, February 15th from 10 a.m. to noon at the KCPD Regional Police Academy Auditorium. Also on Saturday, February 22nd from 10 to noon at the Robert Mohart Multipurpose Center Auditorium. And on Saturday, March 1st from 10 a.m. to noon at the KCPD South Patrol Division Auditorium. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hello and welcome to Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center. My name is Jesse Barnes and I'm the Executive Director here at Bruce Watkins Cultural Heritage Center and Museum. And we are excited because we are hosting this February through March 31st, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom exhibition of photographs. These remarkable photographs actually take you to the experience that so many of us know from Dr. Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream. The March on Washington actually occurred August 28, 1963, with over 250,000 people. One of the largest marches in our nation's history, it is a march that has been forever remembered. This march has so many different aspects to it, and it brought together a group, diverse group of people, whites, blacks, Hispanics, people from all different races and creeds came together to join together for our nation, for freedom, and for justice. This exhibit was created by the National Exhibitions and Archives in Washington, D.C., and we are fortunate to have these photographs and a few other artifacts to celebrate the 50th year of this event occurring. We welcome you to come to Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center. We are located at 3700 Blue Parkway in Kansas City, Missouri. We are part of the Parks and Recreation Department, and our exhibitions are free and open to the public. We're open Tuesday through Saturdays from 10 until 6 p.m. And we are excited to have this exhibit, and we hope that you'll bring family, friends to this exhibit, and join us for other events that we have here at the center. Our website is kcparks.org. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you more news of upcoming shows and sporting events taking place at your city facilities. The Greater Kansas City Auto Show will be at Bartle Hall March 5th to 9th with more than 500 new cars, trucks, SUVs, crossovers, and minivans. Imagine yourself behind the wheel of fuel sipping hybrids, the highest end of the luxury market are rugged, hard-working trucks. 
the 2014 Greater Kansas City International Auto Show is shaping up to be one of the best in our history. For more information, visit KansasCityAutoShow.com. The original Kansas City Home Show returns March 28th to 30th at Bartle Hall. It's been a Kansas City tradition for 66 years to welcome spring with the show, which is offered alongside the Flower Lawn and Garden Show. This show provides a wide array of new opportunities and choices for homeowners to get a jump on spring home and garden projects. Headlining the event is HGTV star Monica Peterson, interior design expert, HGTV dream home giveaway host and author of Make It Beautiful. For more information, go to kchba.org. Spring Madness returns to the Municipal Auditorium with both the MIAA and NAIA basketball tournaments in March. The Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletics Association, MIAA, will hold its Men's Basketball Championships at Municipal Auditorium March 6th through 9th. The conference's top eight regular season finishers will play in the championship tournament, which will be held in Kansas City for the 112th stray year. The event will attract thousands of fans over its three-day stretch. You can also attend the NAIA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship annual event March 19th through 25th. This is the longest continuous national collegiate tournament in any sport. These are just a few of the many events that Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Scenes such as this can be terrifying and even life-threatening. Domestic abuse is a good portion of the 911 calls we receive. You should be aware that Missouri's Adult Abuse Act provides protection for adults seeking relief from being abused, harassed, or even stalked. To begin the process of protection, the victim can apply for an ex parte order. We spoke with Detective Ben Caldwell of the Domestic Violence Section about what that means. An ex parte order of protection is, uh, the term ex parte means temporary by nature. Uh, so it's a temporary order of protection. It's an order that is granted by the courts or by the judge and in essence it prohibits contact through telecommunication devices, um, computers, telephones, text messaging, uh, direct presence, uh, prohibits people from uh, going to residences, businesses, schools, and it provides that, that protection until an order can be heard or until the matter can be heard before a judge. To get an order of protection you simply have to respond to the county court um, in which you reside wherever an offense occurred um, or where the respondent who is the person who is going to be served where they reside in one of those three counties you can go. Typically it's best if the person goes in the order or in the county that they reside in. Now sometimes persons will need protection or need an emergency ex parte order of protection. In those cases they can go to any of our shelters and they can assist them with the obtaining them and there are some hospitals that can also help with an emergency ex parte uh, order protection and for those I would encourage people to contact their local law enforcement agency and they can direct them to those resources. There is no cost at all for an order protection it is uh, totally free and totally confidential. If they violate that order the petitioner simply needs to call the police department and tell them that a violation has occurred and if the person the respondent is present that person may be arrested and held accountable immediately. Other times we may work the case, uh, be investigated by the domestic violence section and worked as either a potential felony, state misdemeanor, or city ordinance violation, depending on the circumstances. In 2011, our 911 operators received over 43,000 disturbance calls. 8% of those were clearly identified as domestic violence at the time of the call, but many more are identified as DV assaults by the responding officers. Every citizen should be aware that the courts and police have methods in place to help victims of abuse. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. 
In observance of the President's Day holiday on Monday, February 17th, city offices will be closed and trash and recycling pickup will be delayed one day. Residents who usually have pickup on Monday will receive it on Tuesday the 18th. Residents with Friday pickup should put out their trash on Saturday. The city's airport terminal advisory group has announced a series of public meetings to receive input on potential changes to Kansas City International Airport's terminal configuration. The meetings will take place on Monday, February 10th at Oak Park High School, on Monday, February 24th at the Mohart Center, on Monday, March 10th at Southeast Community Center, and on Thursday, March 20th at Johnson County Community College's Polsky Theater. All meetings will take place from 6 to 7.30 p.m. The proposed 2014-15 Kansas City budget has been submitted. It is now available on the city's open data catalog at data.kcmo.org. The public is invited to provide input and testimony on the proposed budget at three upcoming public hearings. Those hearings will take place on Saturdays from 10 a.m. through noon. The first is Friday the 15th at the KCPD Regional Police Academy Auditorium. Then on Saturday, February 22nd at the Robert Mohart Multipurpose Center Auditorium. And on March 1st at the KCPD South Patrol Division Auditorium. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov slash weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.